You guys see my screen? Yep. Yeah, feel free to right. get started whenever you're ready. Yeah. All right. Got you guys. So, um, before I get into it, uh, I know there's a couple of new faces here. Uh, so I just want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Marco. I am currently a freshman at college, Palomar College. Right now I'm studying computer science. However, of course, I want to get into the field of cybersecurity. Um, so for the past month or two, or actually for the past month, uh, Jesse gave a talk on Wazoo or Waza. A lot of people call it different things. And I've been obsessed with building a sock. And so I found this tool called the Hive. Uh, so the Hive is an incident response platform. Um, and the main part that makes it so good or that makes it different from the others that it's built on collaboration uh, to be more specific uh, introduces introduces there we go uh, live streaming of events alerts and cases and tasks so you can have multiple analysts on the same platform working at the same time seeing what each other what each analyst is doing at a given time uh, instead of having one person work on it commit the changes another person can see it it, it ruins efficiency like by a lot so with this uh, it's designed to increase efficiency and work productivity um it also does this by allowing automation of events being imported from misp malware information sharing platform cortex or even wazoo or other themes um, these can be piped into custom templates that the org admin can be can create and i'll go over this uh, in the demo but the main point of the hive is to increase increase productivity by allowing integration of teams and other security tools in your environment um and then so hey, Mar another Marco? thing the, more 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 into integration uh the hive can integrate with themes uh threat intelligence feeds even on twitter uh you could do that it provides a functionality through a python api script um also vulnerability scanners as well uh, the main three, though, that I'm going to be showing are MISP, Wazoo, and Cortex. A little bit more about Cortex. Uh, Cortex is created by the same company, Strangebee. And the main thing about Cortex is that it will take observables that you find in your environment and allows you to analyze them or, and respond to them. Um, so it integrates with the Hive. Let's say you, have, you found an IP in your environment. What it'll do is it'll automatically send that to an API for, let's say, VirusTotal. Instead of you having to, as an analyst, go to VirusTotal, check it, see if it's good, come back. It's all within one place. Okay, so getting on to the demo part, which is my favorite part. Um, so I'm going to just go over the Hive real quick. Uh, when you install the Hive, you're first going to be met with um, a default credentials admin the Hive. This is your super admin account. This is where you can create organizations, users for those organizations, admins for those organizations. And the way it works, it's similar to MISP in that you can have multiple organizations on the same platform and they can all have their own uh, observables and they can also share those observables with other organizations. Um, and then these are defined by the analysts if they wanna share them or not. So I've already gone ahead and created null org, which is going to be our test organization for today. Admin is one that's already predefined, but you can create as many as you want. I think it's up to like 10 or something like, or three. I'm forgetting. Uh, it's a community license. Uh, I forget. <laughs> but um, so you will create an old admin or admin account. And what you do is you go up here, press plus. Um, I only have three maximum, so I can't add it, but you can add a user organization and then you can add their login yada yada um so i have two accounts i have the admin account for the organization and then i have the analyst account now another thing about the hive which makes it really good is its um ability to change permissions and to be very like um forget the word precise about them so you can manage permissions for a certain account like if you have the analyst that you only want to see the cases and not have to do anything to touch them like for uh I don't, I don't, I'm blanking, just some intern or something that you're letting them see. You can set it up to where they can look at observables, look at cases, but they can't touch them or mess up with them. And then um, this is going to be for later, but you'd also create an API account that allows you to connect with Cortex, Wazoo, and MISP as well uh, for importing those alerts. So once you've gone ahead and created your null 
or admin for your null org. You're going to log in. You're going to be met with a blank screen. I have all these alerts right now because I just wanted to make sure it was actually working before I started. Um, but what you'll be met with is, where are you? Here you go. So you're going to be met with this screen. Uh, there's going to be nothing here. You can create your users. You can adjust their permissions. Uh, you can create case templates. So back, referring back to the slides, this is where you would create uh, a template for importing alerts into to make it super easy instead of having to make a new case every single time for uh, a similar observable. Um, so you can change the name, you can add a prefix to the case. So let's say uh, if you are importing alerts from MISP, you can add MISP to it. And then the name MISP template and display name MISP template. And another great thing about the Hive is that you can actually set the traffic light protocol traffic light protocols and the permissible action protocols as well. So if you, let's say you don't want it to leave your organization or anything at all, you can set it to red. And then if you know if the analysis is still ongoing and the attacker still can see it and whatever you do, you can set it to red as well. Vice versa, if it's low severity, if it's fine, you can set them all to white. And here's the severity, you can choose severity for this template as well. We're gonna just set these to green. And then you can also adjust your tags and your descriptions. And then for the case template for the tasks, what you'll do for these tasks is you'll create a task and you can assign them to certain groups. So let's say you have a group of analysts, you can assign it to them once you create this task. Uh, so a task name, let's say I network observables. So I can spell, there you go. And then you can also set it to mandatory if you need there to be at least one log present, set a description. And then here you can choose a certain assignee. So let's say we're gonna assign it to the analyst here. Confirm. And then what else am I missing here? Oh yeah, description, this template. And then for the tag, set to miss. And boom, we have our case template. So if we were to go over here, go over to our alerts section, I'll show you uh, the integrations a lot for MISP right now. Um, sorry, Wazoo sends everything. Okay, actually I'll go with that later. <laughs> but you get what I mean, it's it's very configurable. There's a lot of things you can do uh, to increase productivity for your environment, uh, for your specifics. So I wanted to get in the actual specifics of it uh, in regards to connectors and connecting to MISP and all that. So here I have my MISP set up. Um, and what this will do is you can use the API key that you've created from MISP, uh, pipe it into the Hive, and then what it'll do is it'll send alerts that get created over here in events. It'll send them over here for checking. And same thing for Wazoo. Uh, I have my Ubuntu server running right now. And what I do is I'm actually... I'm not going to go over it, but I am going to link the documentation because everyone's use case is different um, and how they install it and all that. But it is very good. Uh, it's very clear. It's essentially just a custom uh, script that you're installing onto your Wazoo instance. And then you're configuring the log levels, uh, the server IP, the API key from your API user on the Hive. Um, and yeah, that's it for was there any questions so far? Sorry, I forgot to ask. Yeah, All I right. got a quick question. Yeah. Um, is there like a list of uh, like connectors of like, you know, what uh, external tools the Hive supports? So, you know, I, know, I see Waza and MISP, which I'm not, I've never even heard of MISP, um, but is there a list of other ones they support? So basically anything that can support webhooks or an API key and uh, JSON and then those security tools can out export those into JSON format, the Hive will take it. Okay, okay. Um, you can look it up too. Uh, there's a lot of documentation in regards to connectors. Um, and then in the case of Cortex, uh, which is a tool that queries uh, tools for like different information, uh, there is, I think it's about, 27 analyzers right now. Uh, this includes MISP. Uh, if you have CrowdStrike installed, let's see. Oh wait, no, sorry, that's, that's for Responder. Um, but if you, uh, you can look at VirusTotal, Shodan has it too. 
and then with the spawner section this is a cool one you can push um like changes to wazoo for example so you find an ip in the hive you can change you can export that to a responder and was in cortex have it block the ip straight from the hive which is again adding to that workflow and then uh, they have it for various different xdrs all right um so now to more specifically wazoo uh if you guys followed jesse's tutorial you guys should have wazoo installed already um and then using this config um you install a python module you use this custom script uh you plug that into the integrations directory run it um and then restart it you should have all these set up um and then once you have the manager restarted you should start getting a ton of stuff um i forgot to adjust the alert level so it's just giving me everything wazoo has right now uh, it had a lot of audits but to test this let's see so we're gonna connect to my test ubuntu server right here sure we're gonna just do some brute forcing on ssh dot two four oops, sorry and then start guessing passwords now what i'm hoping is that you might have to refresh for some reason, my wazoo doesn't um, do real time updates after refresh, but it should be updating right here. Interesting. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> is it not? All right, well, any quick questions before I start trying to figure this out? Yeah, real quick on the MISP, where would, uh, or could you provide the URL to, like, install that? Oh, that yeah, of course. Nice. Yeah. Um, would you guys like me to just do a quick overview of MISP, too? Yeah, definitely. I'm down with that. Okay, awesome. All right, so the MISP project is a threat sharing, a threat intelligence community. Um, I think... Corey is knows about this. I think he's the one that told me about it. But um, it's it's works similar to the Hive in that you can have your own organization. Uh, have you can consolidate all your observables, all your information, and then you can share it amongst the organization, or you can share it to a greater community, or, or which are called communities. And these are organizations that all have similar attributes. For example, um, there's one community. I forget the name of it, but it focuses in the finance sector. And so what people will do who have these MISP instances, they will share their threat until they gathered to the other uh, enterprises or companies that deal in the finance sector so they can also add the these observables and tactics and APTs they find to their, their seams and socks and whatnot. Um, so for example, um, Kudso, this organization found using the CrowdStrike Falcon platform, they found Lazarus Group in their in their network. And so they shared it out to uh, the greater MISP um, global community, which I'm a part of. Uh, they can do it through feeds, which you can subscribe to. You don't have to be part of a community to download a feed. And what they'll do is it gives you a list of all of these observables and events that they gathered in their server uh, let's see, or not necessarily like in their environment, and it'll list out hashes of files downloaded. It'll uh, using YAR rules, like it's it's very um, there's a lot to it. <laughs> there's a lot to it. Um, I'd recommend looking at the documentation because I don't even know that much yet. I'm still playing with it, but it's very good if you work in um, if you deal with APTs normally, uh, so that you can look at this and try to strengthen your own infrastructure this way as well um any questions on misp yeah i i've actually never heard of misp oh really oh i thought you were the yeah. one who told me about it Corey. this was like oh, oh i think I'm, cool. we, i think i mentioned lazarus group with you or one of the threat actors when i was going over in, intelligence um yeah but yeah so this is a global essentially 
tool where like you basically just set up this is this a server a local server you have set up yeah it's a local instance uh you yeah. upload any observables alerts events any files you find and what we'll do is you can keep in your organization if you want by setting the yeah. traffic light protocol um or you can just send it out to the greater community that you're part of or just to a feed uh so that everyone running this can download it as well for their environment i can i can cut in with some information i use mist in production for a couple of different environments just if you want oh yeah awesome yeah cool um so with the with the mist protocol you can use it completely on-prem um but like the internal network thing to, to manage threat intelligence sharing so it, it, you can use it essentially just as a collator for different threat intelligence so whether you're finding threat intelligence externally just on a flat file that's just being updated online and you can pull it down and shove it in uh, or um, MISP heavily incorporates with um, stick speeds and taxi feeds don't know what those are i highly recommend looking them up because they're like a standardized or well, sticks is, is standardized threat intelligence exchange that's what it stands for um so it's a standardized way of sharing iocs um and then most people will just use misp as a collator database for that but sticks and taxi is actually the thing that's doing all the hard work and you can set yourself up as either um just a collector or also a sharer um, and then you can join like a node network from there. So I know that um, Australia, we have um, our Australian Cybersecurity Center has the CTIS, which is a cyber threat intelligence sharing um, system where uh, basically every single government department and um, large businesses, that type of stuff can uh, opt in the network and you can opt in as a a collaborator in that you're sharing intelligence and then that intelligence gets refined by the Australian government for um, to say, okay, we've seen this IOC from someone else who shared intelligence as well. And we know this IOC is part of this threat group and stuff like that. I believe the DHS has something similar for the US. So you guys would have to look that up for yourselves. Yeah, I believe those a, are called tipper reports. I think those are tippers from like the, the US yeah. government. Uh, is that just an uh, an outgoing report from them? Um, I th think so. Let me check. Well, while he looks that this up, this is this is this is an exchange that goes both ways from this end. So you can send your information to the exchange with your uh, DFIR notes, essentially, if you wanted to, and you could say, "I'm part of this industry vertical." Like they'll have record to say that you're part of this industry vertical or whatever. I've seen this IOC and we've done these activities or whatever from it uh, and that will automatically get propagated to the rest of the network and so that if hey, you're seeing um, an attack from a certain group or whatever uh, that you know might be part of some APP or whatever or it might be a certain phishing campaign, phishing is a really easy example to work from, um, you know, we get reports from Telstra which is our big ISP to say oh, you know, we, we've seen this type of phishing information uh, from these domains and stuff like that. And then immediately everyone else part of that network will get that same intelligence and will be able to protect themselves by automatically putting those blocks in on their email filtering system. And MISP is just the, essentially the database which will run that for you. That's awesome. Well, thanks for the elaboration, man. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, well, so now we know what MISP is, um, and I know a little more how it works as well in the global stage. Um, any questions regarding Cortex before I move on to uh, creating a case? Can you do a real quick uh, explanation of what Cortex does? Yeah, so I'll go over a little more. So Cortex in of itself is a tool um, that's supposed to be efficient in uh, identifying IOCs. Uh, so basically, or at scale, sorry, I forgot to add that, at scale. So let's say you have hundreds of observables found in your environment and you want a quick way to, let's say, check them on virus total. What this will do is you can run an analysis and it will send the IP send. that you find. Oh. Yeah, it'll send the IP that you found and then uh, you can send it to Shodan, send it to, send it to virus total, and it will. So let's do 8.8.8 real quick. 
it will send that a query out and it'll come back with results of what it found. So virus total works, it's still running, but it'll give you uh, parameters, what it found. And the way this makes the hive faster is that it's built into the hive itself. So if we go into this case right here, we can look at this observable right here and we can have it run an anal analysis on it through the hive. So it essentially just makes analyzing IOCs or observables you find a lot quicker and a lot easier without having to leave the hive and um, it just makes, makes it more efficient. And then um, for re responders part of it, uh, it works as the same way as analyzer. What it'll do is it'll, instead of grabbing information from a service, it'll push out a rule. So let's say, for example, you find an IOC, you can push it through re responder uh, through an API to, let's say, your firewall. I think this one has a, a, a responder for OpenSense. And it'll push a rule out to OpenSense and tell it, hey, block this IOC for me. And so that removes a whole level of having to go into that actual configuration, um, I, I think so, and then having to go from there. It'll do it all from the Hive, or from Cortex as well. Very cool. Is that, yeah, OK, perfect. Does that seem a little clear for you guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So they, and they integrate both together. So you'll have, like, whatever's in Cortex will respond. Like, you'll get a integration with the Hive. Yes. So you can run everything from the Hive itself. You don't even have to open Cortex at all, which is nice. Is there APIs that you can leverage to just, like, if you want to do it via command line, just, I guess, authenticate and then run, like, hey, do a check between, like, virus total, like, or I, I guess you would do that directly through virus total. Or, yes, or... I believe so, actually. I think they have, um, I know for the Hive, they have a, a Python module that you can use this through. I'm assuming Cortex is the same thing because it's made by the same company. Um, yeah. I'll have to look into that more. I'll send some links if I do find any. But I'm assuming so because it works on APIs mostly. So you should be able to run a command line script. Because I know for MISP, it has that where you, it has a command line interface that you can run from instead of having to open up the dashboard and all that. Yeah. OK, cool. All right. Just awesome. trade. Yeah. Cortex and the Hive as a SOAR platform primarily. So you can create any kind of uh, PowerShell, Python, whatever you want with it, and you can you can either hook in or hook out of the platforms to be able to orchestrate and automate whatever you're doing. So it, it, it serves as a way to collate information and then push out your, your automation or hey, I need more information from like an X Force Exchange or, or whatever else like that. As long awesome. as you can code it, you can do it essentially. Yeah. Nice. So very easy, very fun, very configurable. I'm trying to see if that SSH brute forcing showed up. I'm assuming it didn't. So yeah, that's there we go. Found it. All right. So um I found there you go, SSH. So let's say your um so your wazoo picked up uh, an SSH uh, brute force failure. It's popped up in your hive now. So what you can do from here is you can take this um, observable that you found, and what you can do is you can import it to a certain case. So create case from alert. So you can either use it from a template or you can do an empty case. I'm just gonna do an empty case and we can just leave it as is. Um, usually you wanna, um, change it up a little bit to you know what your environment defined. You're gonna look at severity, amber traffic, TLP, PAP, amber. Uh, description, it's left this, you don't, it's part of the observable, we'll just do SHD. Investigation. Perfect. And so then once we have this case created, what we can do here is we can create tasks for our analysts. So we go to the task tab right here, click the plus button, and let's say find auth error logs. And let's make it mandatory, they have to find at least one. And then we'll assign it to our analyst. And let's make them rush it, make it due by tonight. 
And so once we have that set up, we're going to log out of our null admin, log into our analyst. And what you'll see here is we have this task given to us and it shows up in red right here. So we open up the tasks, due date in three hours. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the alert section and we're going to rush to find a, a log. So if we come back here, we can do, I'm still, I still don't know how to use the filter section, so we're just going to have to search through it manually real quick. Let's see, there you are. Okay. So what we can do is we should be able to merge selections in case. Actually, hold on, sorry. Okay, so we find false log errors, and what we can do here is we can update our activity if we wanted to. Uh, say we found some logs. You can include the timeline as well. So uh, once you're done, you can do a dashboard of tasks over time uh, to, I guess, verify uh, productivity. And now I'll say it's, it's in progress. So um, let's see. Sorry, this is um this is the hive five. I'm used to the hive four, so little things some are some different. Uh, yeah. So then, what this will do is uh it'll take that alert that you just imported. Uh, give it the observables will be listed right here. Uh, so this is technically my IP. Um, and so this was the one that was doing the attack, and it was listed attacking this IP right here. So we can preview it, look at it, um, see where it's been, and this is another beauty of it, is that it will look into other alerts, and it'll see if it's been found in other alerts as well. As we can tell, it's been found in other SSH log failures as well, or authentication failures as well. And then from here, uh, we can use the Cortex uh, section for analyzers, and we can send it over to our MISP instance, we can send it to virus total, tell it to see what it gets from it, and then we can use the information from here to uh, help us. And then MISP says it found nothing. And then I'm assuming Virus Solo found nothing as well because it didn't find anything. Um, any questions so far? Is this shit pre? Because this is like really cool. Yes, they have a, this is a community license um, as well. And then Cortex is also free. MISP is free as, to, as well um wazoo is also free if you want to use this uh it just takes a lot in regards of hardware resources um i found that out when trying to run it on my on my pi <laughs> it did not like it at all um it's uh, so... it's open source as well it's not just yeah, it's open source yeah Love it. thanks for sharing man yeah no worries and then also you can add ttps uh because it has a direct um integration with the attack framework so you can set it to, uh, let's do credential access, brute force, password guessing, and then it occurred on today. And then boom, you can add uh, TTPs. So you can help when you're uh, doing the actual incident response part of it. Uh, you can look at this and look at the techniques to help, um, I guess, benefit your uh, case and whatnot. Um, all right, so then once you're done with it, you can close the case. You can set it to uh, false, if it was false positive, true positive, we'll say true positive. Was there an impact? Yes or no. Found brute forcing. Forgot to. Okay, we'll just delete it. I don't. There you go. <laughs> All right, let's close this case. And boom, that's the case done over there. It's uh, we found it's true positive. 
and that's a little bit overview of the the case part of it there is a lot more to it um i'm still learning right now i just thought this was a cool tool i'll show you guys uh so it's definitely you can definitely do a lot with it uh this is not the limit of it there's so much more you can do i just don't know that much yet um but another last last thing i do want to go over um if time for 742 yeah okay it's gonna take a minute uh dashboards so Another thing about the Hive that I love is that you, it will create custom dashboards for you for like business meetings. If you're showing, you know, people that fund your Steam or your SOC or whatever, uh, you can show them your alert statistics, your job statistics to see how well you guys are doing and like who's doing work and all that. You can look at how many observables you're catching to see if if it's actually working. If you're if all of your um, if your entire environment is working politely and it'll just spit out all these alerts for me without having to make a custom dashboard for yourself, which I know could be pretty tedious. All right. that's pretty much it. Any other questions for me? Yeah, I got, I got one yeah. for you, Marco. Of course. So, um, first off, this is awesome. I actually haven't used this before or seen this. So it's, it's pretty cool to, to learn about like Stixes and, and taxis and the hive. And this, the second piece is that I'm curious about. Um, one of the things I've noticed with a lot of like open source tooling is that they may be good for smaller companies, but once you start getting to larger companies, it's a lot harder to maintain them. Um, have you looked at other tools that are similar to this that are like more enterprise level tools or? Yeah, or so uh, they do have an enterprise option, uh, software as a service option. It's really expensive from what a lot of people say. Um, if you're looking at other enterprise level tasks, I mean, any XDR would do good for you. Um, I know my trend micro has a good one that I've used. Um, of course, CrowdStrike, I think they have an option for this too. Yeah. Um, I don't know the exact name of it, but, um, Can, yeah. I, would, I would recommend just using the free version for enterprise anyway. I've used this when dealing with a sock that has up to a petabyte a day type of data going through it. Holy cow. Really? That is a ton of data. Wow, okay, oh, yeah, because yeah, a lot of people didn't recommend using it enterprise, but never mind. <laughs> it depends on how much not, compute you can throw at it. Not the enterprise one of this, I'm not saying when you've actually got the other, uh, the other elements of it, the, 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 the free thing, because it's so extensible. You can make mm -hmm. it do whatever you want. Yeah, that's another thing that's really cool about the Hive is that you can do a lot of things with it. It's not limited to one thing. Marco, but, uh, you, need, you need engineering resources to support it, though. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Marco, I was going to ask, uh, any any knowledge on if it supports, uh, like, any integrations with uh, Security Onion at all? Um, It did used to be on Security Onion, if I remember correctly, but then they got uh, it got removed, and they have their own cases thing. Um, I'd recommend checking that out, too. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's just as powerful as the Hive, but you, it's not as extensive. Um, but yeah, that's all I know. <laughs> cool. Hey, well, yeah, thanks for the talk, man. Anybody else have any other questions for Marco? All right. Well, thank you so much, guys. Yeah, thank you. That rocked. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah we had Oscar good for the information. information.